Hey there, my name is Lexi and thank you so much for joining me today. In this Lex chat, I'm going to be talking about how it is I handle writer's block. And this topic was actually selected by one of my followers and supporters, The Real Eyes from Instagram. So if how to handle writer's block is a topic that you would be interested in hearing more about and discussing more about, stay tuned. Happy New Year. I hope everybody enjoyed their holiday. Um, as y'all know, or maybe some of you don't know, I don't know, if you've been following me on the Lex chat, I did not get to, to visit any family for Christmas, but I did get to visit family for New Year's. Christmas, I um, actually got to get body painted, so. I was a red and white candy cane skeleton, so that was really dope for Christmas. And New Year's, I actually went to go see my brother and my niece down in Florida, so that was really dope. I rented a car and everything. And I'm just trying to, in general, get better with um, dealing with like certain travel anxieties. I don't know why that is for me, and I kind of blame pandemic for exposing some hidden anxiety that, I, that I'm starting to suffer with. but. I don't know why in recent years, in the last two years, I have been developing anxiety really bad around certain things. And one of those things was taking trips out of town. But you know what? It's probably not even really a pandemic thing that I think now that I think about it and the thought is actually coming to my head. Maybe the anxiety has more to do with the fact that because the way that I provide for myself is through music and by way of engineering and engineering i'm very much at the mercy of everybody else's schedule and it's very much an hourly job so with an hourly job if i don't work i don't get paid there's no sick leave there's no paid time off i just don't get paid and there is a certain amount of money a certain quota that i have to make to be able to maintain my bills either for that month or the way that I have my system set up. Whatever money that I'm making in January, that's gonna pay for what I do in February. Whatever money I make in February, that's gonna pay for what I do in March, so on and so forth, um, pretty much unless I come into some huge sum. But no, even if I get a huge sum of money, I'm still paying myself out equally so then I can put extra funds in a reserve so I can just you know make sure that I'm straight. So I think the anxiety really comes from being afraid of missing out on money. And it's caused me to have a fear of not making enough money, not having enough money. And then if I do leave, missing out on the opportunity to make money. So that is that is where I'm realizing my anxiety has come from. So all of that to say that it became a very anxious thing. I had a lot of angst going into um, New Year's travel because I hadn't done it in so long but it's something that I want to make sure that I am keeping myself in check about because I do want to make sure that I visit people and I hang out with friends and family and make sure that I let people know that I care about them by going to visit them you know some people come and visit me I need to do I need to have that same energy give that same energy back so it was just different you know I spent, men I spent money instead of making money, and that's what felt weird. You know, I rented a car on Turo. I could have taken my own car, but I didn't want to put the miles on it, and I didn't want to risk, like, there's anxiety there, too. The last car I had before I got my Lexus, it was a little blue Honda, older car, 2000. 2000? 2000 Honda. That was a 20-year-old car. Yeah. And um, I took it to, like, North Carolina. It's like a six-hour drive. The drive to Florida was like seven hours. Side note, the traffic that I went through to get down to Florida, Google Maps told me seven hours. I was on the road for 10 hours, bruh. There was three extra hours of traffic. Not even really accidents. There was like maybe two accidents on the way down to Florida, but it was mostly because of the freaking rain that was slowing everything down. But anyway, um, I, when I had the Honda before I had my Lexus, I took a trip to North Carolina and came back and it ended up causing my engine to overheat and messing up my car. So I think I have a little bit of anxiety. I don't 
I don't want to mess up my car. I have a fear of messing up my car, um, worrying if my car can handle long trips, even though it's a newer car and I've had no technical issues with it, praise God. But yeah, just um, a lot of anxiety around traveling for me. And yeah, I think I think we just discovered that in that little thought process that I gave y'all, my train of thought. So, but it was fun, rented a car from Toro. Me and the kitty cat went on a road trip. She did so well. I'm very proud of her. She um, she found a spot. She laid down. She went to sleep. And most of the trip, actually, she slept in my lap while I was driving. She was super chill about it. Super chill. But, um, yeah, her and my brother's cat, they weren't really rocking with each other. But there were no cat fights. So it was all good. And we just chilled. You know, the thing about me when I when I visit people or hang out with people, we could literally go to sleep, take a nap together, like maybe not in the bed for real together. But um, if I'm coming to spend time with you, I am there to fit into your schedule. I'm there to do what you do, whatever you do. I'm going to mold myself to fit that because I came to see you and I came to, you know, um, me coming to see you means that I'm fitting into your schedule and whatever your norm is, I will accommodate because I came to see you. I came to visit you. That's the whole point. So my brother was feeling a little bad because we didn't do anything for New Year's. We were going to go to one of his friend's house, but somebody in his friend's family got COVID and we was like, nah, we're not doing that. So we did the lazy fat people thing. We stayed in the house watching Netflix and um, we watched Cobra Kai. And me and my niece, we watched Attack on Titan. Why didn't nobody tell me how good that show is? Oh my gosh. But for real, it's kind of like the cartoon version of Game of Thrones. If I had to, just like the emotional roller coaster that the show takes you through, Attack on Titans to me is like the cartoon equivalent of Game of Thrones. So, but man, there's only one season on Netflix, which pisses me off. I don't know why they do that. You need, ugh. I think I need somebody's Hulu password, please, so I can watch Attack on Titan. Because that show, yo. First off, the concept is crazy, right? I don't really feel like explaining it because it's a lot that goes into the show. But man, just it's a well thought out show. And the storyline to me is solid. So, you know, we, we binge watched Cobra Kai. My brother wanted to watch that. Earlier that day, no, the day before that, me and my niece, we binged watched Attack on Titan. And we just, my brother went, he got a hella snacks. We got cheese balls, we got chocolate pretzels, <laughs> we got cookies, we got uh, vanilla brioche bread. It was just real good. I look high as fuck. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not high. I'm just real tired. I'm just real tired. I'm gonna explain that in a little bit. But, um, yeah, for OI Music, I was talking about Attack on Titan on Netflix, but there's only one season. And then um, the next day, we binge watched Cobra Kai because that's what my brother wanted to watch. Tell me why I was just talking about Cobra Kai. It's a good show. It really is. It's a good show. I don't know if it's just me, though, but these real um, action, these live action or whatever you call it, uh, scripted shows, they're becoming like more and more corny to me. Like, I don't know. They just don't feel natural these days i don't know maybe it's the writing maybe i'm biased to it but uh let me see the real eye says have you considered doing doordash on the side just for some extra cash and that question is uh in regards to me saying that i have a little bit of anxiety about you know if i'm not if i'm spending money i'm not making money and if i'm not in town to possibly make money then i'm possibly missing out on money so i've considered doing doordash but I don't know that I want to use my car to put that many miles on it. But I have been thinking about renting my car out on Toro and actually getting up and running with something like that. That feels more up my speed, even though I know it's more risk involved. That feels more my speed than doing like a DoorDash or an Uber or a Lyft. But I would not mind doing that. I think I maybe I should try it out, I should say. But I'll probably try a Lyft or Uber before I do DoorDash. Honestly, although DoorDash, we really got to talk to people for real. Lyft and Uber, you got to be a taxi. It's like real live Grand Theft Auto. Ah, my random thoughts. Somebody told me if you have writer's block, that means you lying. 
I'm gonna address that later. I like that. I'm gonna address that later. I really like that. Attack on Titan. OI Music says, Attack on Titan is dope. You should check out Tokyo Ghoul or Parasite as far as anime. Yeah, my niece, she actually wanted to start watching Parasite, but I think I was like tired already because we had been watching Attack on Titan all day. I was very, there's like 25 episodes in the first season. I was very much, I was in. That show is so good. Why didn't anybody tell me? Because I know it came out years ago, but I just didn't get into it like everybody else. When did I start? 14 minutes? We're coming up on 10 minutes of Lex check. Lex check. Um, but yeah. Someone told me if you have writer's block, that means you lying. I like that. I like that. But yeah, so that was that was my New Year's. And then on the way back to Atlanta, the trip said Google Maps estimated six hours and 40 minutes. It took me nine hours to get home. My God. Why do you like playing with doors? What? Don't move. Don't move. I'm gonna catch you. Why you like playing on the door? This is the most dog-like cat I have ever seen in my life. Huh. I didn't know her tail was that color. Never paid attention to that. Anyway, she's being a little weirdo. <sighs> but yeah, um, so yeah, on the way back, Again, there weren't really any accidents. It's just hella rain. I wouldn't even say holiday um, traffic. It was just the rain slowing everything down. It's always a fight on 75 to get out of Atlanta and to get back into Atlanta. Seems like no matter what time of day, unless you're going like after midnight, I guess. Except for that one random night, I think there was a football game in town and there was like traffic on 75 at like one in the morning, I was pissed. But yeah, so my New Year's was really dope. I'm proud of myself for battling that whole anxiety as far as being afraid of traveling, being afraid of missing out on money, being afraid of planning a trip. I don't know why I developed that anxiety. Well, as we discovered earlier in the Lex Check, I understand how that anxiety came about, but I don't know why it's become such a huge deal in the past couple years, which is why I said earlier that, you know, maybe pandemic also played a role in affecting me in that way. So yeah, New Year's was really good. Um, what else is going on with Lexi? The reason why I'm looking a little high in the eyes, I did not smoke, but I have been up for like three days straight, pretty much working on a film project. And if some of y'all tuned in the past couple of days, I think I went live a few times um during the editing process but so the guy one of my friends the guy who shot my videos love chaser and bedroom he also filmed this short film called tell me by small onion studios um and the writer and director's name her name is markel young super dope the stuff this is my second time working with her but um she tackles heavy subjects in her films so this tell me the first one i did for her was nine month mother where a woman she was older she had never been married but she wanted kids her ex-husband didn't want kids she gets pregnant but you know it's like out of wedlock she doesn't think the guy would be interested in helping her raise the baby because he's like younger or whatever but she wants to keep the baby because she always wanted kids but because she's so old she has higher complications you know higher risk of complication during pregnancy and she ends up losing the baby good good and that was only 12 minutes long really good the sound sucked for that movie and you know honestly same thing with this one that i just did i should be getting paid way more but it's more about the experience that i wanted to gain not so much about the uh the money just yet but now i think um i got a good handle on the expectation for doing sound for film so this next one that i've been working on for the past three days so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Sunday night, I went in at eight. From 8 p.m. until 10 a.m. the next day. And of course I took breaks in between. Like I would take 30 minute nap. I took a two hour nap, I took a three hour nap 
just to like keep myself going. Um, and then 10 a.m. is when I left. No, cause I returned the car on Monday. So yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, I returned the car on Monday. So yeah, Monday, eight o'clock at night to 10 a.m. Tuesday morning. And then I took a break until two. I worked two to four on Tuesday and then came back eight o'clock Tuesday night, worked until 10 a.m. Wednesday morning. And then Wednesday night, which was yesterday, I worked from eight until until five in the morning I finally finished it yeah five of five o'clock five o'clock this day today is Thursday what the sixth five o'clock this morning this day is when I finished and that one is 30 minutes long so it's about um basically you know the stigma of therapy in the black community this guy's having relationship issues he starts to see a therapist and we uncover why he's so like closed off you know, his dad goes to prison because his cousin was touching on him. Dad beat the dude, killed him, went to jail, protecting his son. The son blamed himself. And that was translating him having issues in his relationship with his girl because he never opened up to her about it. Very good. Very heavy. The actors, A1. It's a very good short film. Um, that With that one, I'm proud of myself because for three days straight... Did the hallucinations start yet? No, not yet. But uh, I, I woke up at 11. I would have slept longer today, but somebody called me asking questions about the studio. <gasps> I'm going to the studio, but not the studio that, oh, whoopsie. But anyway, um, yeah. So the first two days, really, the majority of work on this short film was having to relink all the audio. And that's where the annoying part came in. Whoever saved it, like the original editor, they named the audio files in the session, but they did not make sure that the root files were named. So when it transfers to another computer, the system doesn't recognize them because it's not labeled properly. And so none of the files are pulling up. So I had to go in and take all of the sound and listen to all of the takes they did and decide, okay, did they use this take or will this work in this area? And it was just a lot. But I'm really proud of myself because um, technically I probably should have started this like a month ago, but she didn't pay a deposit until Monday. So I didn't get started until Monday, okay? And she told me that the deadline is the end of this week. So I wanted to make sure I push it out, you know, be protect, protect, be professional or whatever. And so, you know, push it out in three days, boom. Waiting on the notes to see what changes they may have, but very much wanted to stick to that deadline. I'm proud of myself because I proved to myself that if I need to get something done, I could put my head to it and I can get it done. Like I, I'll put the hours in, my sleep connects, where I don't feel drowsy or, you know, groggy, or even if I do, I'm okay with giving myself a break, getting back up, get right back to it. So I'm really proud of myself for the hustle aspect that I displayed to myself in getting something done, getting a rush on it. So very proud of myself. Uh, this new year, even though I don't really believe in New Year's resolutions anymore, um, the word that I'm starting out with for this year is discipline. Because the last couple of months of 2021, I was not very disciplined and I'm disappointed in myself in that. But you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things came with that as far as like the word anxiety again comes up. Um, oh, to wrap up the movie project, right? That's why I look like I'm high. That's why my eyes is all low and I got bags. Even though I have a filter on right now, you can still clearly see the bags under my eyes. But I've been up for three days and I only got like four or five hours of sleep this morning. So that's why I'm looking a little, ooh, la da 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 da, la da da, yeah, I guess I look high, I guess I look high, I guess I look high, la da 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 da. Anyway, so yeah, hi kitty cat. You gonna jump up here? She looked like she was gonna jump up here. So yeah, um, what, so my motto for the past couple of years has been, fuck it, why not? And now I add to that thought process, right? Um, discipline. 
discipline and, and focus. And then something else I definitely want to make sure I bring back into the new year is taking um, quiet time, which is I used to do uh, an oath of silence for at least four hours out of the day on a Sunday morning, right? And if you ever Google what an oath of silence is, it's, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. You take a vow to disconnect from, well, here's my interpretation of the vow of silence, right? Um, what you might find on Google is that when you stop speaking, you can open your ears more. So my version of the oath of silence, <clears throat> excuse me, I, you know, stop speaking, I stay silent, I stay off of social media, I try to stay off, I stay off my computer as well, no TV, so I disconnect from like the digital stuff. And I might turn my phone on do not disturb or vibrate and just hear what's around me in real time versus always trying to find something to engage with through these little digital devices that we're on, right? And that was doing really well for me because I wasn't always in my phone or looking at a screen. Part of the reason why I got a headache now, yeah, because I didn't have a lot, a lot of sleep the past couple of days, but also because my eyes are burning from being exposed to the light in these devices all the time, especially with our profession, right? Music, being in the studio, we're always looking at some digital screen. So I'm actually going to talk about that probably in the next Lex chat is, you know, getting off of this screen and remembering to engage with the real world um, so that <laughs> she keeps attacking my feet, but getting off screen and remembering to engage with the real world so that you can feel refreshed and you won't feel drained and things when you get into the studio. And um, but that that's actually a good segue for this week's topic as well. And as I told y'all in the introduction, this topic was submitted by The Real Eyes on Instagram, and it is how do you handle writer's block? Burnout is very much a real thing. And when you've been on the screen too much, when you've been staring at devices and computer screens and television screens all day, every day, 24 seven, it's a lot and it can feel draining. Kitty cat, this is not your toy. Girl, it can feel very draining. <laughs> she's so cute it can feel very draining and it can cause you to feel like you can't think straight it can make you feel tired even if you're not necessarily tired but the strain that your eyes have to go through constantly adjusting to absorbing and processing the light that's coming into your system from these devices it's it's a lot and so that contributes to writer's block sometimes as well but uh yeah i think i'm done rambling about my lex chat that was a very not Lex check, Lex check. That was a very long Lex check today. 23 minutes it's looking like. But um, yeah, so let's let's get into the topic of how do you handle writer's block after these messages. Goddamn, goddamn, raise your hand if you working hard. Goddamn, goddamn, raise your hand if you know you say, yeah. Shoot, hey, shoot. This week on Lex Chat, we are talking about how do you handle writer's block? Before the break, I mentioned, what up, Gray Keys? Before the break, I mentioned that, you know, the next topic, one of the next topics I'm going to get into is controlling your screen time because that can affect your awareness when you're in the studio. But screen time, if you're not careful, and there's another subject that I want to talk about is limiting your screen time, right? But also being mindful of how much content you're taking in. Both of those things, in my opinion, contribute to writer's block. So screen time, right? The fact that we're always getting constant stimulus, stimuli, excuse me, from being on the phone, being on a laptop, being um, a viewer of TV shows, watching television. Please don't bring that over here, kitty cat. Thank you. The fact that we are always constantly 
not even just always taking in, not just always taking in t content from these sources, but also being exposed to the light. And our brain is constantly processing the information of light that's coming into our eyes. And it hurts. It burns, honestly. If you're always on the screen, you're always looking at something, you're actually straining your eyes, looking at this artificially developed thing, light box device, right? Um, and I don't know about y'all, but being on the phone too much, looking at the screen and even talking on the phone too much, it hurts my head. So all of that to say, right, screen time, you are exhausting your system by constantly looking in your phone, having all that light coming into your face. Um, I need to get like some blue light glasses or something. But you are constantly straining your eyes and straining your system and straining your brain because we're constantly processing all of that information that's coming in, right? And what happens is you get fatigued, you get tired, and you get groggy, you get headaches. And I actually need to do more like official research on this, but in my experience, what I experienced by being on the phone too much and watching too much television and always staring at a computer screen because of the nature of my job, engineering, being in the studio all the time, I get headaches and I get tired. I feel, even though I have not been physically doing anything, because I'm always looking at the screen, I feel tired and I feel exhausted just the same because I'm always looking. <laughs> She's having such a good time. Because I'm always looking at a screen. It's just very exhausting is what my point is. So when you're exhausted, that can be one form of something like a stimulus that induces writer's block, right? Um, another thing, another thing that I find myself struggling with is because I'm constantly on these devices, right? You're on your phone, you're on your laptop, you're on your TV. I find myself, I like to take in a lot of information through YouTube. I like to take in a lot of information through podcasts. And because I'm in the studios, I don't really listen to too much radio. I might still turn on like my CDs. Yes, I still have a good collection of CDs, but um, I take in a lot of information because that's where a lot of my inspiration comes from, right? Taking in information from learning things from other people and, you know, just hearing other people's perspectives on things. So I'll watch YouTube videos and then I'll read the comments to see how people are thinking, where people's minds are at on certain topics, how people are like responding and all that good stuff, right? And it exhausts me because I'm constantly, like I said, constantly taking in information. I never give myself a break. And so that makes me too tired and too lazy. And that's something that brings on writer's block. So for me, what I have to do to keep myself in check and to keep myself disciplined and focus, which is those words that I mentioned in my Lex chat, my Lex chat earlier, Maybe I should change the name of that. Lex check and Lex chat. Lex check. What I mentioned earlier during the Lex check, right, is that I need to do a better job of being disciplined. So for me, you would think that taking in all of that content from the podcast that I listen to, from the YouTube videos that I'm watching, you would think that taking in all of that content would give me inspiration, but it's actually having the opposite effect of making me very tired. And um, it makes me sleepy, it gives me headaches, and I become lazy, and I don't want to work on music. Or I, I'm taking in the content, but I'm still processing it. But I'm using so much energy to process everything that I've watched, and it's so much information, because we have so much at our fingertips, that I end up getting into a slump where I don't actually write about it. I don't do anything with the information. It just overwhelms me and I go take a nap basically. So for me, I need to stay disciplined and limit my screen time, limit my interaction with sources outside of myself. And I need to give myself quiet time because, and like I mentioned in the Lex, Lex check earlier, right? Those oaths of silence that I would do on a weekly basis. And let me just let me just explain that real quick. So I talked about it a little bit in the Lex check, but oath of silence is basically you agree to be silent. The premise being that you close your mouth so your ears can hear better, so your eyes can see better. And so you have better perception, better connection with the world around you. 
if you're always ironically i'm talking a lot on this podcast but if you're always talking 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 putting out you're never receiving so we have to give ourselves breaks every now and then and i'm gonna go back to doing it it was on a sunday morning where no tv no phone no laptop no social media and a lot of times not even talking to people just being by myself and being present and what that does is it stops that constant bombardment of outside influences outside content coming in and we're taking in a lot of information right and we have access to all this information but we never process it what ends up happening too is we're taking in all this information that we never plan on doing anything with so it becomes very dangerous actually if you don't have the discipline to make sure that once you get what you need you disconnect for a little bit and process it for yourself and for me that's the point of these oaths of silence these vows of silence those days when i would you know do that everything that i've taken in for the week or if i'm planning my upcoming week i sit with myself i sit with my thoughts and i'm allowing my brain the time to process what i've really taken in and i can create game plans I can have chats with myself. I can have chats with God. I can hear better. I can formulate opinions better because now the source is me. The voice is me, right? So I'm processing and I'm creating a game plan and I'm making decisions on how I want to move forward. And I think part of writer's block is, like I said, we're taking in so many things, but we're not processing and we're not giving things their due time. So... Part of how I would handle writer's block for myself is doing a day of silence. Great Key says, Lexi, real talk, you a genius, for real. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'd like to think that I'm a deep thinker, you know, or someone who wants to understand things on a deeper level. Excuse me, I had to get some more juice. But yeah, um, I think about things a lot. And of course, one of those things being that, you know, we have access to so much information. We have the ability to take in a bunch of things and learn a lot. But just because you can take it all in doesn't mean that you need to. So what happens is we have so much access to everything. We're actually overwhelmed and it keeps us stagnant and it takes away like the journey and the pursuit a lot of times in finding things out and in researching and acting along the way. We will research ourselves to death. We will try to over plan to death before we actually act on the things that we learned or read about or heard about. And I think it's really a shame. So that's why I would recommend that we all, especially since you know we're always behind a computer screen, being in the music industry, I would suggest that we all experience a day of silence or even if it's just a few hours of silence to really disconnect from all this digital shit because we were never meant to live digitally. We are human, having a human experience. We need to be in the world, right? So Gray Key says, this talk five minutes in is so valuable for creators. Thank you. I be trying, bro. Tell people about Lex Chat, you know, so we can continue these conversations. I don't know that there, at least I haven't found, I haven't searched for a channel that tackles the psychological side of the industry more so than just the technical stuff, you know? So, uh, you know, 3900 says, I have that problem too. So when it overwhelms us, all the information has to break it down. Yeah, we don't give ourselves the time to break down the information and it's overwhelming and it's exhausting. You take in so much information, but you never stop on one thing. Honestly, you just need to know what you need to do next, the one next step, and then act on that next step. And then when you feel like you need to know more to get to a different level, that's when you can go out and figure out more information. But we try to take in everything we can, and we end up getting stuck because we feel like, ah, oh, where do I start? You just gotta start. And um, that's how, you know, you could be affected when it comes to writing a song. You got so many things you want to write about. You got so much going on in your mind, but it's hard for you to stop and pinpoint or focus on one thing. 
And that's why people get writer's block. Or sometimes it's more so of a frustration of not being able to stay focused on one thing. And that causes writer's block. So, yeah. You know 3900 says, I think that may be my problem. And that shit drives me crazy. It drives me crazy, too. Um, it drives me crazy as well because I don't think we're... I don't think. I know we are not meant to be on these devices as much as we all are. We are already zombies pretty much, but that's a conversation for a different day. Um, how do some of y'all handle writer's block? Because that's one way I do it. Another way that I handle writer's block. So this is ending up to be a conversation about being online too damn much, right? So basically, let's keep going with that part of the conversation, right? So we're always engaging with the digital realm, this artificial realm, you know, these lights emitting from these devices. And the problem is that in order to be a good artist, in my opinion, art is commentary on life, right? But if you're not living life, how are you going to know what to talk about? If you're not experiencing life, how are you connecting to your art? How are you producing art if you're not even in the world? You know, we can only observe so much, but I think a huge problem with why people get writer's block is because we're so obsessed with being on these devices, being on social media and engaging with things that don't matter. And we're not in the real world. And because we're not out living life, there's an imbalance. So we are always online seeing these highlight reels of people living their lives and they only put up the best things and never put up their struggles right so that's another mentally draining aspect of always being on these devices you feel inadequate you feel like you're not doing enough <laughs> and it causes you to feel you know a little sense of depression because it's like oh these people are having a good time seemingly living outside of the device but they took the picture for, you know, people to see online, whatever. But there's an imbalance, right? You're watching everybody else live life. But here you are on your phone looking like this all day. You know, you got to get out and you got to live life. You have to go to parties. You got to go to the movies. You got to go out to restaurants. You got to treat yourself. You know, treating yourself could be go take a hike up Stone Mountain or Kennesaw Mountain. Get out of your house, engage with nature, get a change of scenery is what I'm getting at. It's one thing to see it on a screen, but to experience it in real life, you will never get the sensations through a screen that you will get experiencing it physically in the flesh. So I think that's why that's another reason why people struggle with writer's block. It's hard to describe something that you've never experienced. And if you're not living life, you're not experiencing, you're not connecting. And honestly, as it pertains to your art, you're not believable. You're not believable because you haven't experienced it. You haven't gone through it. The Real Eyes says, for me, I take breaks, step away and recharge my energy and let it flow to me naturally. Exactly. Great Keys gives me the hands up. Hands up, hands up. Go. That's what I think of when I see those. Y'all seen that movie, Grown Ups? Go! <laughs> yeah, the cast. That's what that reminded me of, Great Keys. But yes, so taking a break. Here she go with that cat stuff. Taking a break, stepping away, recharging, let it flow naturally. So I think um, another thing that happens, right? When I'll be like in the studio trying to write. These days, I will still try to push things out. I'm real stubborn. Like, if I don't finish my song right then and there, I'm probably not going to finish it. Although I am getting better with making sure that I pick back up the next day with that song versus starting something new. But, um, yeah. Um, sometimes when you're trying to force out a song and you can't settle on the next line, you can't settle on the next word, you should probably just take a... It's okay to say, all right... Maybe I'm not feeling it so much today or right now. Let me take a step back. And maybe, let's say you're writing a song about going to the strip club.
but you ain't ever been to the strip club in Atlanta. You don't know the experience. Like I wrote a song for, I wrote a hope for somebody a few months ago called it's the bands for me. And I don't know if they are actually going to use the song or not, but I wrote a dope ass hook based off of my experience dancing in clubs. Bussing bands with the money man, need another 10. On the gram, bottles coming in, come and do your dance. It's the bands for me. It's the bands for me. And when I heard that beat, it reminded me of being in a club. It reminded me of what it's like to... I wasn't necessarily talking about me dancing, but just the whole atmosphere of being in the club, right? In that kind of atmosphere where you're expecting women to dance for you. You got the money man. That was my boss. He was the promoter. He paid us. But he's the money man. So you got a money man. He literally comes in the club with bags of money. Ones, right? And he goes around the club. Don't knock over my stuff. He goes around the club to each section. And the sections will say, yo, I got $500. I need 500 in ones. Because they want to show out. They want to throw money. They want to do it for the ground. Or another section, I need 200 ones. I need 1,000 ones. He would go to these sections and give them their money, give them their stacks, and then come to the girls and be like, all right, girls, I just gave this session, this section $1,000. Go over there and dance. Or I just gave this section $200. Go over there and dance. So it's kind of like a circulation of money. but And then you see people in the club. You know, Everybody's on Instagram. They got their phone. Or when the girls come out with the bottles and the sparklers, like it's just a vibe, right? And us dancing, it's the bands for me. Because we're not dancing unless we're getting paid. So all of that experience, that's maybe like two months worth of dance experience that turned into a dope hook for a song. Busting bands from the money man. I need another 10. Because I done spent all my money. I need more. These girls is really doing it. I need more money. Um... Busting bands with the money man, need another 10. On the grand, bottles coming in, come and do your dance. It's the bands for me. It's the bands for me. It was just a dope vibe that you would not be able to understand unless you've been in that environment, unless you've experienced it. Girl, I'm about to take this toy from you. But she's having such a good time. It's just really loud and distracting. We are the only ones in the house. All right, so Universe Music says, I just tried to reflect on my experiences and find something worth talking about, but it definitely gets difficult when your life is consumed with work. But yeah, getting out in the world is definitely the remedy. I agree. We still need that balance. And then You Know 3900 says, so that's why I stopped writing because life has its way of pulling on you and seeing how life can be a bitch. Yesterday, I got my feet and hand done. You see? Because you got to break yourself out of that routine. When you, there is a lot of structure in having a routine, right? But then there's a monotony that comes with the routine if you're not careful. Things are always the same. You're always expecting how things will go. It becomes boring. So you got to kind of break out of that routine every now and then by treating yourself. Um, for me, I took myself to the aquarium or going to get my nails done on Saturday, I'm finally getting my hair back done, so I'm really excited about that. But, you know, different things to treat yourself. Step out of the norm for what you're doing, and it's a balance that gets restored. You can't work all the time. You get weighed down by work. You need to play and balance it out. But you can't play all the time, because then how are you going to pay for your lifestyle? So you got to have that balance. Yep. The Real Eyes said that hook is fire. Ant-Man pc 2 atl says, where you used to dance at? So I used to dance at this lounge um, off of, I want to say off of Far Road, like in Buckhead somewhere. It's called O2 Lounge. And I did that. I didn't do it for long. I danced for like six months. No, nope. January, December, January, February, March. I danced for four months. But, um, yeah, it was called O2 Lounge. I think it's somewhere off of Far Road. It was for after hours. So we danced from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. And, y'all, that is some of the easiest money I've ever made in my life. I've actually been thinking about going back to doing it. It is, it's an easy job, but then it's a, it's a hard job at the same time. Because the hours, 
And then I got to kind of like, it's easy for me to put on because I want the money, obviously. And I just try to tell myself, like, it's just a big party. I'm basically getting paid to party is what it is. Um, but, you know, for someone like me, I'm not going out unless I get paid or unless it's a networking event. So it helped me get out of my shell more. And I've realized that I'm not, I'm a shy person, but I have the ability to turn it on and off. And the reason why I got into dancing is because I wanted to like loosen up more, you know? Um, I discovered that I can do that. I just got to be in the right environment to turn it on and off. And I can indeed turn it on and off. So I'm proud of myself on that. Some of the easiest money I ever made, I'll probably go back and do it. Um, but I think I would want to do white clubs more because I don't think I'm built for the black cup, the black clubs. It's everybody got big booties, big bodies. They got a lot more to twerk back there. I got something to twerk, but I'm more of a slim girl. I have more of like a traditional white girl's body. Not that flat. I got curves, but my ass is just not that big. But, um, KC. Sorry, this cat is really loud. Oh, I miss you too. I was thinking about you the other day. I'm about to take her toy away, y'all. Should I do it? But I see you've been traveling, doing your thing. And uh, entering more contests on Instagram. I need to be like you because I want some free stuff too. But yeah, um, all of that to say, yeah, you have to experience life. So the best way to handle writer's block for me, I can see you making a killing in the white clubs. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that was by the real eyes. I can see you making a killing in the white clubs. That's what I'm saying. And something else with the white clubs too, right? In the black clubs... It's really just a bunch of twerking. Granted, you go to like, um, what's that? Magic City. I still haven't been to Magic City. I need to go. But if you go to like Magic City or um, Pinups is one. What's another one I've been to? Strokers, I guess. Oh, uh, the one right up the street. Blue Flame. That's a lot of twerking. Now, they do pole tricks, but it's a lot of twerking. It's just a lot of ass. For me, as a woman, I get bored with that because I could twerk in my mirror at home. I want to see some tricks. So with the white clubs, right, they're doing more body movements and more dancing. I want to do that because I don't necessarily want to be shaking my ass. The reason why that job is hard is because you're working out for three hours straight. I got to shake my ass and stand in these high heels. Even though they are really comfortable, the platform, it levels out with the heel. Even though it's really comfortable, I got to walk around in these shoes all night. I got to shake my ass. I got to look pretty. I got to make you think I like you because I want you to throw this money. I got to be all up in your face, play cute, flirt, whatever. But it is easy money. And New Year's last year, man, only reason why I stopped dancing, right? I would have kept doing it. And it was only on the weekend. So super easy, like Friday and Saturday nights, technically Saturday morning, Sunday morning, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., right? Only reason I stopped doing it is because that particular club, they discontinued after hours because, as y'all know, maybe or maybe not, Atlanta was one of the few cities that stayed open during pandemic. So everybody from like Chicago, Pennsylvania, like, yeah, Philadelphia, Philadelphia specifically, everybody from Philly and Chicago and a few other places from up north, everybody was coming from up north, coming to Atlanta to party. Unfortunately, they brought some of their wretchedness with them and five people got shot and, and or injured across the street from the club that I was working at. So the club owners no longer felt like it was safe. They discontinued the after hours. And I did not ask that promoter if he had any more locations where I could dance at. And I also felt most comfortable at that spot because... You know, that's what I was used to. I was kind of used to the girls and I liked how it was structured. We dance as a group, not as a group exactly, but like it would be like up to 10 girls, right? And we all dance as hard as we can, get everybody to throw the money and then we split the money at the end of the night. And I really like that versus it's more anxiety, like more anxiety gets driven up and worked up in me if I feel like I got to go out and like, be up in people's faces and get them to throw money on me individually. I feel like I'll make less money, but I don't know. Maybe not at a white club, but I just like the structure of it, right? And one of my friends was doing it with me too, so that's why I was more comfortable doing it with her. But yeah, that's the reason why I stopped doing it 
it got closed down at that particular location. But I have been thinking about getting back into it. Y'all see, I've been working on my pole stuff. But yeah, I think I would want to do a place like Cheetah or I don't, there's another white club I went to that I can't remember the name of it, but I think it's somewhere off of Paces Ferry Road. I'm not sure, but that was like a white club. I would try that. The only thing there though, the other thing that I thought was dope about the club is I didn't have to be naked. We could just walk around in cute little outfits. But at these strip clubs, I would have to be naked. And I don't know, for the money, I could probably get over it. But uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to expose my body like that, for real. Universe Music says, I've seen some amazing acrobatics at the strip club. Yes. Those girls, you have to have so much fitness and stamina to do these tricks. And like, man, but twerking for three hours straight, it's a workout. And the club air is not the greatest. Club owners be acting like they're tripping to give you some water, honestly. They be making you try to pay for the water. It's just like, girl, get out of here with that. But it's a lot of fun. I remember New Year's last year was a lot of fun. I danced for New Year's and for Christmas. It was a lot of fun. And I made hella money. It was easy money. Oh, man, it was good times, good times. The Great Key says Houston is king of strip clubs. Houston, uh, Atlanta, sir. Atlanta. Casey Lowe says, if you work at Cheetah, I got someone you should watch out for. Is that the, um, not the dude from Eclipse, right? Or is it a, do a different guy? I also got to decide if I want to do a sugar daddy thing. But I just want a sugar daddy who doesn't want any sugar. Like, if we could just text every now and then, or if you could, like, take me to lunch and dinner, that would be great. But I don't want to give you no sugar. I'll give you company, but yeah. <laughs> The Real Eye says, can you try to get on with Love and Hip Hop? I don't know if I'm popping enough to be on Love and Hip Hop. I could try though. Um, I was in production for a reality show just before the holidays. Oh, a girl. I met one of the dancers there. Her name is Joy. Does your friend, is one of your friends who works there? Or is like, she a good, a big tipper or something? Or she works there? And Gray Key says, your core gotta be straight. Your core... Your core, your upper body strength, and your inner thigh and leg muscles gotta be on point for pole dancing. It is a hard workout. Side note, my mom and stepdad finally came to see my house for the first time. They did not make any comment on the pole in my room. No. My dad and my stepmom came and she was like, sweet, and I'm like, ooh, this is cute. You got a pole in your room. <laughs> Well, my mom and my stepdad, they did not even acknowledge the existence of the pole. I don't know. That's weird. Let's see. No, a girl. And ha, a platonic sugar daddy. Casey Lowe says, ha, laughing at platonic sugar daddy. Yeah, I need me a platonic sugar daddy. That would make things easier. So, uh, yeah, this whole conversation in a roundabout way. What's up, celebrity chef Maurice? What's up, Henry? Thank y'all for clicking in. We are at the end of the discussion, however, um, which, you know, started out on how we handle writer's block. And just to recap, the main way that I handle writer's block is to live my life. We cannot stay cooped up on these devices. And I know how ironic it is because I'm talking to you through Instagram Live. But we have to remember that we are humans having a human experience don't get too caught up in the metaverse. Don't get too caught up in this digital realm because it will suck you in. It will keep your attention. It will drain you. It will make you tired. And it will make you so tired to the point where you will not be able to function mentally to process things like writing a song. Or you'll be tired and you won't have the energy to create. So be very careful. My advice to handle my advice on how to handle writer's block is to have balance in your life and go live your life. Not just behind these screens, but get out in them streets. You ain't gotta be for the streets, but sometimes you gotta walk in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, live your life, treat yourself. Um, if I could use Casey Lowe as an example, she travels and that's how she treats herself. I like to get my nails done. I'm finally getting my hair done on Saturday. Um, I've just got back into taking myself on dates. 
And it's not that I don't have someone to take me on dates. It's just I'm looking for a particular kind of people, a particular kind of person to take me out, I guess. But my thinking behind that, right, is I don't want anyone to be able to say that they're doing something for me that I haven't already been doing for myself. So if I want to be taken out more, I should know what it's like to go out. And whether that's with friends or by myself, I need to take myself out. I need to show myself a good time. So like, you know, take myself to the to the um, aquarium, which I went to the aquarium for the first time since being in Atlanta on my birthday. Took myself to the aquarium. Next thing I'm going to do is go to the zoo. I want to check out some museums. Um, I want to go to medieval times, you know, eat a medieval meal and watch some jousting. Some knights duking it out on the battlefield or whatever. I don't know how that goes. I did indoor skydiving. That was fun. And just doing things that help me to know who I am as a person. Help me to, to know what my likes are, what my dislikes are, what are my interests, what things could I see myself doing as a hobby. It's really all about, it's really all about learning yourself. You have to know yourself to be able to articulate who you are. You know what I'm saying? So that would be my advice for handling writer's block. Just go live your life. Make a list of things you want to do and make a plan on how you can experience it. Because if you're always working, all work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy. Is that what the saying is? Is that how that goes? But if you're always working, there's no balance. There's no inspiration. You got to live life. You got to experience people and things. And you'll whether it's a positive experience or a negative experience, you're drawing energy from those experiences to transfer into your music. So that would be my advice on how to handle writer's block. Casey Lowe says, OMG, I did all that for my 28th birthday, medieval and aquarium. Hey, I went to the dolphin show and I got splashed by the dolphins. I felt like such a kid. It was a great time. And I went by myself and it was totally fine. That's one thing I like about wearing masks during, you know, pandemic. People don't be looking all up in your face no more. I really enjoy that. I really do. Random thought, random thought. But um, yeah, it was great. I felt like a kid. And then they have like a little conveyor belt that you stand on as you go under that tunnel thing. And then like the big old whale shark swims by and it's just all magical and blue and shit. <laughs> it felt like I was in a movie. I felt like I was a kid again and it was just a good time by myself. But um, I do want to do adult field trips eventually. Get groups of people together who want to just go experience stuff. But yeah. Let me go ahead and wrap this up because I do have to go to the studio. I have an 11 o'clock until whenever. I don't know how long we're going to go. But yeah, um, let me know what are some ways that you battle or handle writer's block when this posts on YouTube. Celebrity Chef Maurice says, I know one thing. You can sing. And that's sang. S-A-N-G. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> Uh, um, gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up because I do need to get ready and maybe make myself a little more presentable. But um, yeah, if you are interested in these chats and you would like for me to have more time to chat and more time to do creative things and be in on the process of you know me creating or in on the process of how I think. And we just chat about things that affect us in music and in the creative industry in general, then please, please support me on patreon.com slash LexiATL to become a patron for just $5 a month. Or if you choose to pledge a little bit more, you can have engagement with these live conversations as well as get special behind the scenes footage and never before seen uh, content from what, I, what am I saying? Never before seen content. Basically, Exclusive. That's the word I'm looking for. You will get exclusive content as a patron if you go to www.patreon.com slash LexiATL and for as little as $5 a month, become my supporter on there. We can do more chats. I can let you in more on my creative process, things of the nature, advice on you know how I handle certain things. And we could just have more chats like this. Otherwise, you will 
have to see this video when it posts to YouTube with the general public. Part of being a patron, right? You get to see this stuff as soon as I upload it, not when I decide to make it public. There's a huge difference. That could be days, that could be weeks, that could be months that you're seeing content before the general public. Put that on top of the exclusive content that you see as a patron. $5 a month, come on. But um, yes, so yeah. Make sure that you like, comment down below, subscribe. And if you're on YouTube, turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified each and every time I post a new piece of content. And the last thing that I wanted to bring up before I get off of here, which I forgot to bring up in Lex Check, is that I will be in... Oh my God, where am I going to be? I have a show on the 22nd in Tennessee, I believe. Memphis, Tennessee. That's right. So I'm partnering up with Game Changers Radio and I will be performing in Memphis, Tennessee on Saturday. I believe that's January 22nd with Game Changers Radio. So make sure you hit the link. No, 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 no. That's the 29th. All right. The 22nd. And I may be getting my dates mixed up here, but I have performances on the 22nd and a performance on the 29th. I believe the 22nd is actually going to be at the Gathering Spot of Atlanta. You do not have to be a member at the Gathering Spot to attend this event, but it is by Chem Ministry and it is a Christian based um, ministry, but they talk about relationships in a progressive Christian way, right? So it's going to be a panel, but I will be performing a couple songs for that event. It is blue carpet, not the traditional red carpet, but a lot of nice, clean cut and spiritually guided people i will be performing at the gathering spot atl on the 22nd which is i don't remember what day look it up you can also go to my website and purchase tickets through the link on my website at lexiatl.com and then the other show at the end of the month that's the 29th that's that's the 22nd the other one is the 29th whatever the 22nd and the 29th. The other show is in Memphis, Tennessee by way of Game Changers Radio. I'm going to put all this in the description or you can go to my website, LexiATL.com to check on those dates and how to get tickets. But yes, thank y'all so much. I got to get out of here and try to stay awake for this session at 11 o'clock. <laughs> um, but thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for engaging in the chat. My name is Lexi. Until next time. Peace.